Hello, this is Attorney Mike Gravel coming to you from Chicago, as usual, where the Wi-Fi usually works. Fresh off from Flamingo Patrol. I had a great time, for those of you who are wondering. And uh, I had this, I did a bit of this clip before. I put a link to that video in the description below. The thumbnail on that was just a good old boy. I, I only did a few minutes of it. It's about an hour long. It's fantastic. I had more stuff pointed out to me. <laughs> Natalie D provided me the entire video. I I've only seen bits. I still haven't seen all the video, but what I've seen is is really spectacularly outrageous. <laughs> Let's do it. Let's do it. I just I, I I told you don't don't expect my usual high quality. <laughs> I just slid into town. U Uber to pizza from Gino's East. There may have been cocktails on the plane. I'm not making any admissions. I'm just saying it's a possibility. <laughs> Let's get started, shall we? Two motor vehicles. We have a dog named Otis. These are the issues raised uh, in the petitioners. Oh, I forgot about the dog named Otis. Last time I did about ten minutes worth of this, and I and I just stopped listening to the facts because this guy had a dog named Otis, and I just figured he wins. The end. That th that's as much as I needed to hear. Motion for temporary orders, and in the counter petition we have just a general statement. That is correct. I, I, I don't think we have any specific requests for relief in the counter petitions that would be relevant to today. All right. Uh, then, uh, Mr. Clark, you are the petitioner. Why don't you give me a, by way of opening, a short statement of the relief that you're seeking here for temporary purposes only? Yes, Your Honor. Um, judge, probably about a month and a half ago when Mr. Haygood came onto this case, um, your honor had issued a TRO. Um, we had requested certain things. Um, the issues we have judged is we talked about keeping status quo on the payment of the bills. And we were told we had an agreement on that. Uh, we talked about Mr. Laney returning my client's truck to her. And we picked a date, a time, and a place, and we thought we had an agreement on that. That didn't come to happen either. We asked that Mr. Laney return my client's dog to her, which was a gift to her. Uh, we had a time, a date, and a place for that. That didn't happen. Since that time, Judge, it has been a nightmare for my client. Um, the bills have been generally being paid as agreed between the parties or as paid as historical between the parties. We just want to maintain that. We're not looking for anything crazy on that. Um, we would like, as you had ordered in your injunctions or in your TRO, Judge, we would like him to return the truck that he wasn't supposed to take from her. And we'd like him to return the dog that he took that's presently he's placed up in Oklahoma at his sister's house. Um, he has come down and on, you'll hear my clients say that based on deceitful conduct on his part, told her he was just going to replace the key fob to her truck. And then he took the only vehicle she had access to, and he took the dog and he disappeared out of town. Since then, Your Honor, you're going to hear her testify. Oh, yeah. That Texas all day long. It is just an absolute nightmare. She's not getting one or two calls a day from Mr. Laney. She's getting upwards of 40 or 50 calls some days, text messages, videos, okay, that's harassment. Bad. Mr. Laney has sat in her house. Um, the police have been out to her house several times in connection with this. You're going to hear also that he's told five or six other people that uh, his actions are getting crazier and crazier and crazier, Your Honor. We have injunctions keeping him away from the house, which we want to keep in place. 
We have injunctions keeping him away from her place of employment at the French grocer, which we want to keep in place, especially since he's threatened her boss with bodily harm. We are asking that the dog and the truck be returned to her. Uh, he has stated several times with regard to the truck that, hey, it's in the shop. I'm just fixing it up for you. I don't want you to drive an unsafe truck and I'm going to get it to you. Well, now he has all of the vehicles and he has the dog with someone up in another state. Uh, he's not agreeing to do anything. And it's a problem, Judge. And we just need that fixed. <clears throat> OK, so far, he's doing a lot of stupid stuff that, that's ind indefensible. I'll say that. But but her this this attorney's position, and I've not watched all this hearing. I, I see where it goes sideways, but I haven't seen all this, all this hearing. But his position is all we want is the dog, his truck, and him to pay all the bills. But what we'd like him to do <clears throat> is to continue to finance everything while homeless. That's all. It's very, very simple. Um, <clears throat> in addition, Your Honor, I don't know. I told Mr. Haygood, and it, it's impossible to get a hold of Mr. Haygood. Um, I have 53 calls to him, Judge, and I've never gotten a return phone call. Um, and I understand he's been sick and he's had some issues, but he says he's going to get his client under control. He can't do it, Judge. And at this point, we, we need assistance from the court, Judge, because we, we don't have any security at all. Highly recommended. And Mr. Blaney's actions or his payment or his cooperation with anything. All right. Thank Today, you, I found out for the first time we actually don't have an agreement that we were told had been made with us. All right. Well, I'm I'm happy to rule. That's why I'm here. So thank you for your opening. Uh, Mr. Haygood, by way of opening. Yes, Your Honor. I think that uh, we have a, a very different view of the facts than, than Mr. Clark has set out. Um, this is a case where my client has been paying what he can pay, but it's a blood from a turnip type situation. Uh, while they were married, uh, there were a number of times when we believe that Mr. Laney's testimony is going to show that she was profligate in her spending, ran up some bills on credit cards and took money that she was not otherwise entitled to take. And as a result of that, Mr. Laney has been trying to I, I pay don't some so. of that uh, debt down to try to ease awesome. the burden on her, but he can't continue to maintain a separate household uh, after she kicked him out, pay for his bills and his expenses, and then pay for hers as well. Uh, Mr. Laney will testify to you about the status of the truck, uh, where that is. Uh, I think we'll also you'll also hear some testimony that she has had access to other vehicles uh, and been able to utilize those. So it's not that she's been totally left without any vehicles. We expect the testimony today is going to show that the dog Otis I know. is a dog primarily for my client. Uh, that it was not a not a gift, and so he would. We, we've never seen Otis, and I I'm telling you right now, I know my chat. There's not a person in my chat who would not adopt Otis today. <laughs> like to hold on to Otis. We don't even know what he looks like. For temporary orders. Uh, in terms of our request for today, Judge, we're just going to be asking for a date certain for my client to get some of his personal belongings out of the house. I don't think that you'll hear any contesting that she could have the temporary and exclusive use of the house or even necessarily the temporary and exclusive use of the truck that we're talking about. Uh, but certainly we would contest uh, him having to continue to pay all of the bills while at the same time trying to protect his uh, credit score from some of the spending that she has taken out uh, in the, in the past you, couple Natalie of months. D. I also think that I don't think you're going to hear anything about uh, any behavior on his part that's put anyone Link to Natalie uh, D. Danger or been a threat to someone or something like that. In the description so, below. Uh, that's what I expect the testimony today is going to be, Your Honor. All right. Thank you very much, Mr. Mr. Clark. Uh, well, let me ask the two lawyers. Do you intend for your two clients each to testify here today? I do briefly, Judge. Yes, Your Honor. All right. Let me have Mr. and Mrs. Laney raise your right hands, hold them up where I can see them. Do each of you solemnly swear the testimony you'll give in this hearing will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Uh, Ma'am? Yes, sir. Sir? Yes, Your Honor. Lower your hands, please. Mr. Clark, you are the movement. 
You may call your first witness. Judge, I'd call the petitioner, Ms. Laney. All right, Ms. Oh, Laney, it is your turn to testify. You are now under oath. Tell me your full legal name, please. Johnny Jack Robbins Laney. Mr. Clark, your witness. Okay, Mr. Clark is calling his own client as a witness. What could possibly go wrong? Okay, Ma'am, <laughs> I'm going to show you what we have marked as Exhibit P1. Uh, you heard Mr. Haygood that you have other vehicles to drive. Y'all basically had two vehicles that were operable in this marriage, correct? Yes, sir. Who has those vehicles now? <laughs> John Chance Laney. And the 2017 Chevy Silverado 1500, uh, was that the vehicle that you drove? Ah, yes, man, sir. He's saving And is he in possession of that right now? Yes, sir. What have you had to do to make arrangements to have a vehicle uh, since he took that? My mother had to come down and I've been driving her 2007 Navigator that's got over 450,000 miles on it and no air conditioner. So you've had to borrow a old vehicle from your mother, correct? Yes, sir. While well, Mr. Oh. Laney is sitting up in Odessa with both of the trucks that are in good condition? Yes, sir. Has he promised to return the truck to you before? Multiple times. Has he done so? No, sir. Is this the truck that you had a prior owned vehicle that was traded in for? Wasn't traded. He sold it to a private friend of his. And then he bought this vehicle and substitute. During your marriage? Yes, sir. Are you asking that the 2017 Chevrolet Silverado be returned to you Friday at 6 o'clock p.m. in front of the Justice of the Peace Office in Marathon, Texas? Yes, sir. Ma'am, there's a Boston Bulldog named Otis. Uh, whose dog is that? He bought that dog for me. That was a gift to you? Yes, sir. Okay, at the time that Mr. Laney came down and took possession of the Chevy Silverado, did he also take possession of the dog? Yes, sir, he sure did. Did you hear me in my opening statement say he did this in a deceptive manner? Yes, sir. How did he do this? How, how, what did he tell you in order to gain possession of both the truck and the dog? He came in while I was at work and asked to um, have access to the truck. Prior to that incident, he had lost one of the two key fobs to that truck. So it was down to one. And he had purchased another key fob, according to him. And he wanted the truck so that he could gain ac computer access so he could program the key fob, the new key fob. So he told you he brought you a new key fob for the truck and wanted to hook it up to the truck? Yes. And what did he do when he, you gave him the keys? to do that he took my my truck and left with, with the dog him. yes he called the dog and put the dog in the truck and left okay and you haven't seen that truck back correct no sir or the you dog you haven't seen the dog back correct no sir where's the dog located right now to my knowledge he's in uh, oklahoma city with his mother and his sister so he just took the dog away from you and he doesn't even have the dog, correct? The my knowledge. There's a speculation. She knows. She said to her knowledge. Do you know this based on information you've been told by Mr. Laney and other members of his family? From his friends and other members. Yes, sir. Okay. Now, ma'am, uh, D here is a repeat of the same truck up there. You're asking that you have use of the two horse trailers there at the house that are still in Marathon, correct? Yes, sir. What did he take with him? He took a dually pickup truck, correct? Correct. And he has a RV up there? Yes, sir. And he's staying somewhere in the Midland Odessa area at an RV park? To my knowledge, yes, sir. We had a TRO, did we not, that prevented him from taking the dog and the truck? Did we not? Yes, sir. And he's taken them regardless, right? Correct. We also have, for a month and a half, been lighting up Mr. Haygood on getting Mr. Laney under control, have we not? Yes, sir. And it hasn't been successful, has it? Not to my knowledge, no, sir. 
Ma'am, I'm going to show you an exhibit which is marked for identification purposes as P4. Do you recognize this exhibit, ma'am? Yes, sir. Is this basically the last 10 days, 12 days of communications between Mr. Laney and you? Yes, sir. So, ma'am, this starts September 7th, correct? Yes, sir. And it shows how many text messages and phone calls a day he's sending to you, does it not? Yes, sir. And he's doing it in, late at night and early in the morning, is he not? Primarily, yes, sir. Have you responded to one single message? No, sir. Not since he took the truck. So like, for example, Sunday on September the 10th, he's texting and calling you at one in the morning, two in the morning, four in the morning. Is that correct? Yes, sir. The next day on September 11th, okay, that's crazy. in the morning, 812 in the morning. Correct? Yes, sir. And then, ma'am, last week on the 12th. The Law Talk with Mike officially does not condone this behavior. Just got way out of control, did it not? Yes, sir. Between 12.45 a.m., 12.53 a.m., 1.08 a.m., 1.09, 1.11, 1.12, 1.14, 1.17, 1.17, 1.18, 1.19, 1.20, 1.21, 1.22, 1.23, 1.24, 1.25, 1.26, 1.27, 1.28, 1.29, 1.30, 1.31, 
Judge, I'd offer P4 as a summary and as a shorthand rendition of my client's testimony. Any objection? No, Your Honor. Admitted. Now, ma'am, in addition my to that. That's my thought. It's not just limited to you, is it? Could just be no, good sir. old fashioned alcohol, but I doubt it. Who is Ada Robbins? My mother. Where does she live? Sanderson, Texas. And has she experienced the same kind of contact from Mr. Laney? Yes, sir. And did your father, her husband, recently pass away? Yes, sir. And he's still lighting her up, isn't he, Aunt? Yes, sir. Is he sending pictures of sexually inappropriate items to your mom, to the Presbyterian church ladies in Sanderson, to 17 members of your family? Yes, sir. Your Honor, I'd object to uh, relevance and best evidence on that. So ruled. Go ahead. <laughs> is there any reason whatsoever? For <laughs> okay, this is too inside baseball, but a best evidence objection there is fantastic. <laughs> We found out, we already know, if you saw the other video, what, what there's, I wouldn't go down this path. I think Attorney Clark, he's got a lot of good material here, material here. I wouldn't say he's sending lewd stuff when it's pictures of her stuff. I, I, I just not the, not the path I would have chosen. For this, Ms. Laney? No, sir. Ma'am, who's Curtis Evans? He's a very long family friend of mine. Oh. He's also the county, I think he's the oh, county yeah. judge in Fort Davis, but he's a very long, outstanding friend of Chance's just, also. Just stop it. <laughs> Ma'am, are you a whore? I object to the relevance of that, Your Honor. Um, All right. What? I'll, I'll tie it up real quick, Judge. All yes, right, sir. go ahead. You're not a whore? <laughs> Well, I mean, are you out screwing Sam Stavanova? This is his own client, people. I get what he's trying to do, but boy, does he make his client look horrible trying to help her. Both from the prior line of questioning and times a thousand with this. As no. Mr. Laney has accused you of? No, sir. Who is Sam Stavanova? The owner of my grocery store. Are you likewise in a lesbian relationship with a young woman that works at your grocery store named Angelina Taylor? No, sir. What about... I don't even know what that means. <laughs> Mr. Laney's former best friend. Um, well, no. Does he also accuse you of having numerous affairs around the Marathon area? Yes, sir. Have you been unfaithful to Mr. Laney one single time since your marriage? No, sir. Ma'am, I'm going to show you Petitioner's Exhibit 9. Just good old-fashioned, regular baseline crazy, huh? This is a text message you recently received from... Mr. L Mr. Laney, where he's going to beat the brakes out of Sam for what happened to you and him, and that he will hurt because he cost him the love of his life, and he will pay in blood. Yes, sir. Is that something that you received from Mr. Laney directly? Yes, sir. Judge, I'd offer P9. Your Honor, I don't recall receiving a copy of that uh, in the email earlier today that had a copy of the exhibits for the hearing um but other than that i don't have a specific objection to it all right p9's admitted and ma'am if i show you p8 this was kind of your concern last week was it not when he sends you a message here saying you need to tell me what our future is. I'm at Firestone to get your front end fixed on the truck if you want to work out our marriage or not. If or no, I'm sorry, this is from a lot long, a lot longer ago, isn't it? Yes, sir. That's right after he took the truck from me. That's uh, either the day he took it or the day after. 
And he says he's going to take it to the auction on Thursday, correct? Correct. Judge it off for P8. No objection, Judge. P8 is admitted. Okay, ma'am, and I'm sorry. Last week, P7 here. Text message from Mr. Laney. Mr. Laney's texting you late at night here, complaining that you can talk to his best friend, but not to him. And then he says, if he is there, I will fuck him up. I'm on the way. He's there. And then 22 minutes later, I love you, baby. These Correct. are the kinds of messages he keeps sending you, right? Yes, sir. Judge, I offer P7. No objection, Judge. Seven is admitted. And man, the problem with Mr. Laney is he kind of comes and goes and even though he's not supposed to be at your house or near your house, he still comes back, doesn't he? Yes, sir. So I'm going to show you exhibit six, which is photograph. Is this a photograph, ma'am, that you took? Yes, sir. I, I don't know if I took it or if the deputy sheriff, Alex Rodriguez, took it, but um, is, is this a water tank that's in back of your house? Yes, sir. It was a uh, like we I we use it like as a swimming pool. Okay. And oh, is this geez. in the bottom of the top picture here? Is this a pickaxe? Yes, sir. <laughs> and what happened to that water tank? Wait, did she just say they use it as a swimming pool? <laughs> This is freaking Little House on the Prairie. What is going on? Ma'am? Chance put a pickaxe through it five different times. At oh, one time. I mean, he, he put five holes. He shows up at your house and completely trashes the water tank by burning the bottom of it? Correct. Judge, I'd offer P6. <laughs> Any objection? May I take a witness on board hire on this, Your Honor? You may. Ma'am, do you recall when this uh, this photograph was taken? Uh, there would be a date on it. You'd have to look, or I could look it up. Look up the date. Well, I don't have a copy of it to to look at, ma'am. Can you tell me what you recall about when this photograph was taken? Um, sure. I was at my mother's house. Um, <clears throat> my father had just recently passed. Like, I mean, the day before. Um, when did your father pass? Excuse me? When did your father pass? Uh, approximately two months ago. Okay. So this would have been prior to you and Mr. Laney splitting up? Oh, no, sir. It's after. Okay. And you weren't there at that time. Did he put the pickaxe through? No, sir. Well, that's my question, ma'am. Did you see him do that? No, sir. Did he tell you that he did that? Yes, sir. I have text messages. And he told you that he used the pickaxe on the water tank? Yes, sir. He told me it was his water trough and he could destroy it if he wanted. That concludes my board hour, Your Honor. I don't have an objection. P6 is admitted. And ma'am, in the affidavit that you prior previously filed with the court to get this hearing, you mentioned that incident. You give the specific date and time and everything about it, correct? Correct. Ma'am, in addition to threatening your boss, has Mr. Laney threatened anyone else uh, and their physical safety? Yes, sir. Anybody okay. that's at my house. Anybody that's at your house. Stop. Correct. And is that why in the injunctions we have it that he's not to be within, I think it's 250 feet of your house? Correct. Ma'am, Exhibit 3 are the agreed injunctions, are they not? And he's supposed to stay 250 feet away from your house. He can't kick you out of the house. He's supposed to stay 250 feet away from your employment. He's not supposed to enter or operate control over the Chevy Silverado. He's not supposed to remove Otis the dog from you, correct? Right. And he's not supposed to mess with the Palomino mare known as Dolly that's in your backyard, correct? Right. Has he threatened to come take Dolly before? Yes, sir. 
And these are the orders signed by Judge Ferguson, correct? Correct. In addition to the TRO signed by Judge Ferguson, correct? Correct. The judge would offer P3 as a uh, accurate copy of your order in this case? That is admitted and I'll take judicial notice. So ma'am, at six o'clock on this Friday afternoon, over in front of the Marathon Justice Center where the JP's court is right next to the library. Yes, sir. You've already talked with the Sheriff's Department and they're able to come out there and do a standby if he delivers these items to you, correct? Right. And Sheriff Dodson knows Mr. Laney pretty well, doesn't he? Yes, sir. And in fact, since your separation, Mr. Laney is called and even harassed Sheriff Dodson over and over in the past month as well, correct? Correct. And Mr. Laney's been told in no uncertain terms not to come back to Marathon and to stay away from you in the house, correct? Correct. Yet he still makes threats in the middle of the night to come F up anyone that's there. And he still says that he can come do anything he wants, right? Correct. Now he has some clothes left at the house, true? Yes, sir. If he brings these items down to you six o'clock on Friday, like we previously had agreed to, that's apparently now been reneged on by Mr. Laney, can you have all of his clothing that remains in the house boxed up and ready for him to pick up and take? Yes, sir. Ma'am, is what you're requesting uh, just and right? Yes, sir. Do you think it's fair? Objection. So, yes, sir. Nothing further, Judge. Pass the witness. Uh, Mr. Haygood, you may proceed. My God, you can't have a, a litigant, uh, you, you know, verify their own, you know, request of the court. That That's silly. With cross-examination. Thank you, Your Honor. <clears throat> Ms. Laney, uh, if I understood <clears throat> your testimony on direct examination, you do have a vehicle available to you from your mother. Correct. Does she have any other vehicles that she can drive? She has my father's truck. Okay. Would that vehicle be available to you if you needed it? I'm sorry. You, you broke up. I'm, I'm very sorry. That's why well, I could straighten Would this that out. vehicle be available to you if you needed it. Objection yes. relevance, your honor, as to the assets of the community estate. No rule. Go ahead and answer the question, Ms. Laney. Yes, sir. And yes, sir. And y'all split back in June of this year? Uh, may, yes, sir. Approximately. And well played. Since that time, Mr. Laney hasn't done anything to try to remove you from the house or kick you out of there or anything like that. No, sir. In fact, it's safe to say that he doesn't want this divorce, does he? No, sir. The communications that he has had with you, uh, although they may have come at, at inconvenient times, uh, <laughs> those communications haven't been threatening to you, have they? Not. <laughs> oh, poor attorneys. Okay, the, the the communications may have come at inconvenient times, and and at you know a somewhat annoying volume. True, sir. <laughs> they have been. Yes, sir. With regard to the uh, stock tank that we were talking about a little bit earlier, was that back in June of this year? I can't remember if it was June or July. Had y'all attempted uh, some type of marriage counseling or something like that prior to it? Not, not necessarily marriage counseling. Uh, he was going to counseling. I was going to counseling. I agreed to go to his counselor so that I could tell him I wanted a divorce. I had been telling him I wanted a divorce. And it was like talking to a brick wall. So my counselor and I had decided that if I went to his counselor and we said it, and I said it in front of him and his counselor, he might accept it. And it did not work. And uh, about uh, your horse, Dolly, uh, that horse is there on your property. Correct. To your knowledge, no one has ever come and tried to take the horse away. Not true. Mr. Laney actually tried the day that he took the truck and Otis. Uh, the little one horse trailer was not here. Um, he was quite upset about it. So therefore he was not able to take the mare. Now, ma'am, you weren't at home whenever this happened, were you? 
I was at work. So you weren't at home? No, sir. I was at work. So you have no idea what actually happened at your home? I know what he texted me. But you weren't there to see it with your own eyes? Objection asked and answered. Sustained. I'll move on, Judge. Uh, your dog, Otis, uh, when, do you, when do you contend this dog was purchased for you? Chance found him on Facebook, showed me the pictures when he was not even available to take yet. Uh, told my entire family and myself that he had purchased this dog. We went to Pampa, picked the dog up. Do you know if uh, it has been uh, advised by Mr. Laney's counselor that he retained that dog for therapy purposes? Objection, calls for speculation, calls for hearsay. Sustained, but I, Mr. Haygood, I'm looking at the injunction the agreed injunction and the order I signed, which seems to prohibit him from taking custody of the dog away from her. So what what am I missing here? I think that that was signed after he actually had the dog, Your Honor. Judge, the agreed injunctions are what we worked out when we originally had an agreement and counsel stated that Mr. Laney was going to bring the dog and the truck back. Uh, month month and a half ago whenever he made his appearance and it hadn't happened and for him to sit here and claim that it's a therapy dog he doesn't even have it it's in oklahoma don't don't shift into argument from objection here i i just wanted to understand if i'm reading this injunction correctly it, you are my good. reading of this is that it's his agreement that he's not going to keep possession of the dog away from Mrs. Laney. Am I am I reading that incorrectly, Mr. Haygood? No, Your Honor. All right, go ahead. I don't have any further questions for this one, Your Honor. All right, Ms. Clark, any follow-up? All right. Ma'am, you've had the opportunity on at least two or three occasions in the past couple of months to press charges against Mr. Laney, haven't you? Correct. And you've chosen not to do so because you don't want to escalate tensions during this divorce, correct? Correct. And ma'am, likewise, last week, we expressed to Mr. Haygood that if this continued, we would seek a protective order against Mr. Laney for his harassing, abusive, and threatening actions, correct? Right. Doesn't seem to have done any good, does it? No, sir. And ma'am, most of the way that you know of Mr. Laney and his actions is from the hundreds and hundreds of text messages and video messages that he sent you over the past few months, correct? Right. Nothing further, pass the witness, Judge. Hey, good, anything else? Not from this witness, Your Honor. All right, call your next witness, Mr. Clark. Good Lord, this is even worse. He's He's got an agreement that he's not supposed to take the dog. He's got all that he needs to win on any issue that's before the judge. The, the, John Laney, I, I felt feel sorry for him. I do, but he screwed everything up and should lose as a matter of law on all on all fronts. Th those are the facts. So why are you asking your client if she's a 304? Come on, people. Judge, I'd call Mr. Laney. All right, Mr. Laney, it's your turn to testify. You are under oath. Tell me your full legal name, please, sir. John Chance Laney. All right, Mr. Clark, go ahead. Mr. Laney, you heard JJ's testimony a few minutes ago, correct? Yes. Can you explain to the judge why it's necessary to call and text your wife more than 50 times a day? Why is that necessary, sir? I love, I love her more than anything in the world. I got a question for you, attorney. Can you explain to me why it was necessary to ask your client if she's a hoe? <laughs> we, all, we all make mistakes. Sir, why is it necessary? Hang on, let him finish. Hang on, oh, Mr. Clark. You asked him why. I want him to finish his answer. Go ahead, Mr. Laney, and finish your answer. Thank you, sir. I love her more than anything in the world. I don't love easy. And when I do, 
she's the only, she saved my life twice. She kept me from losing my leg. And I love that woman more than anything in the world. That's my answer. And you love her to the exclusion of anyone else, is that correct? Repeat your question, sir. So you love her and her only, is that correct? That's the only woman I've ever loved in my life. Well, sir, who is this woman from Pampa, Sabrina Adams Parker, that you're now running around with? You don't love her either? Sweet Jesus! What? Just a good friend? Okay. <laughs> Sir, you threatened to beat. <laughs> I haven't seen this. I didn't see that comment. I, I didn't know he had a side piece. <laughs> I, I give him credit. I didn't think he had it in him. I re <laughs> Especially after that pathetic emotional display right there. Oh, oh here we go. Her boss, Sam Stavanova, haven't you? I don't believe I need to answer that question. All right. He's asserted the fifth. Ask your next question. Sir, you have threatened to last week in text messages that you were on your way to her house and you were going to fuck up anybody that was there, correct? I did. And sir, you've also told her Choice. several times that you're going to beat my ass for representing her, haven't you? No, I didn't say that. I don't, I don't think it's right that me and you have, and her have went and had supper and you've come to our house and had drinks and now you're representing a wife. I think that's a conflict of interest, but that's just me. Do that on the same exact day that you went and took her vehicle away from her and took the dog away from her, that you also grabbed a pickaxe and punched holes in the bottom of your stock tank out back, correct? No, sir, that is not correct. That that happened months ago. Okay. Those states are not correct. <laughs> okay, so that sir, the day after that's not that's not correct. I mean, it all happened, but you have the time frame messed up. <laughs> after we went to marriage counseling, and she walked in there and, and did what she did, and then she told me and the counselor that I could have my dog. Okay, I'll sustain the objection. Ask your next question, Mr. Clark. Sir, on the day that you took the truck and the dog from Ms. Laney at the French grocer, you told her you were just going to replace the key fob, correct? I did. So you lied to her, right? I did. And you've told her on a number of occasions since then that you're fixing up the truck and you're going to have it back to her, correct? I, I'm working on it. It's getting worked on. Objection non-responsive. Well, I think it was responsive. I heard the response. Go ahead and ask your next question. Uh, sir, why is it necessary in this divorce for you to send pictures of sex toys to my client's elderly mother, the women from the Presbyterian Church in Sanderson, and 17 members of my client's family? Why is that necessary, sir? I did not send it to their church. That is not true. You didn't send, send it to any of the women? In the family, because there had never been sex toys in our house for all the years that we were married. And then the day the day her father dies, and she asked me to go home. Objection, non-responsive. And I looked, my blood pressure was up. And I all right, hold on, Mr. Laney. Hang on, Mr. Laney. Was it necessary? He gets That's to finish right. his answer. Mr. Laney, go ahead and finish your answer. You were just explaining why you did it. Thank you, Your Honor. JJ asked me the morning that her father died. She said, I need hay for the mare. Will you go get hay? I said, yes, ma'am. I left right there at the hospital. I went to Fort Stockton and I bought hay and I went home and I unloaded it and I fed her. And I was feeling like I was thinking maybe I was having another heart attack. So I went in the bedroom where my blood pressure cup is 
and I opened the door and wow, that's where the sex toys there. I went in the other bedroom, they were out on the nightstand like it was decor. And that has never happened at our house. Then there was somebody else's toothbrush in the toothbrush holder. I knew it wasn't hers because she's like me. She cleans her toothbrush. Not decor, decor. <laughs> it's so good. Brush <laughs> real well, and it was all section non-responsive, Your Honor. All right, Mr. Laney, you, you may have gotten off track. You were explaining why it was that you sent pictures of those items to those other people. Not why you think she had them, but why you sent pictures of them to other people. So do you want to answer that question? Yeah, because her family kept on saying that I was the problem. I'm not the problem. I mean, we right, have there's, there's, Hold on. That's, that's an answer. That's responsive. Go ahead, Mr. Clark. And you find that to be helpful in concluding this divorce. Is that correct? I doubt it. Sir, why is it you led us to believe that a month and a half ago you were going to be at the Marathon Justice Center with the truck and the dog to return those items to my client and you never showed up. I, that's the first I've ever heard of it, Robert. I didn't know I was doing that. Y'all had, can y'all show me where I agreed to that? How, how, how often do you and your lawyer talk? Weekly. Hang on now, let's not go into attorney-client privilege communications here, Ms. Clark. I'm not, I'm not asking what he said. Sir, you're aware that Ms. Laney's mother, Ms. Robbins, recently lost her husband, right? I was there the morning he passed. Sir, that's not that's not my question. You're aware that he died, yes. correct? Why is it that you think it's appropriate to call her mom at the same times throughout the night that you call and text her? Why is it appropriate to call a recent widow at two and three in the morning and involve her in your divorce? It's not. It's not. So Would there's you that. agree with me, Mr. Laney, that it's probably in the best interest of everybody involved here. If any communications between you and Ms. Laney go through counsel only. I do agree with that at this time. Okay. And Sir, even though we've had these injunctions and TROs in place on harassing behavior, why are we supposed to believe you now that you're going to immediately stop it now when you haven't been able to stop it in the past two months? I have never seen a TRO. I have never seen anything. Okay. Sir, I'll leave that to you and your attorney to talk about. Where is, where's the dog, Otis, right now? I'm working in Oklahoma one week a month, and I, he's in Oklahoma right now. So the and dog's been in Oklahoma pretty much for the last month, correct? No, sir, he is not. Judge, I don't have any more questions of this witness at this time. Mr. Haygood, your witness. Okay. <clears throat> Mr. Laney, got some questions for you. When, when was it that you moved out of your house there in Marathon, Texas? Last week of April. And since then, where have you been residing? In Odessa. I was in Pio for a little bit, but I recently moved to Odessa, Texas. And what type of residence are you in in Odessa? I'm in a RV park. How much does it cost you per month to reside there? 650 for the trailer part rent and 600 and something for the trailer itself where we bought it. So about 1300 a month total? Just for them to, yes, sir. Do you have any utilities there like uh, electricity, gas, water, anything like that? That's included. Uh, what about a vehicle that you drive? What do you drive, sir? I have a uh, company vehicle, and then I have a 2010 Dodge 110 Dually that is currently in All-American Dodge 
Last week it cost twelve hundred, and it's still in there. Extra non-responsive. All right, ask your next question. Yes, sir. Uh, the twenty fifth or the twenty seventeen Chevrolet Silverado we've been talking about. Where is that vehicle right now? It is parked at my house. Is it in a what you'd consider workable condition? No, sir. What's wrong with it? The front end, the tires are separated. The two front tires are separated. Ford's broke. Okay, then tow that thing over and put it in, in the driveway for her. That is the best solution here. There it is. You got it. Leave the keys. Uh, it needs front end alignment. I took it to one of my customers earlier in the week, and he plugged his computer into it. And it has a non-responsive part. I want to hear this. Go ahead, Mr. Laney. What was wrong with it according to the computer? According to the computer, it had a cold start on the number four cylinder. And it could be a number. I asked him what it was. He said, I just have to, he just have to get in there. It could be a number of things to fix it. You don't have right, let problem. me jump in. Let me jump in with a real quick question on that, Mr. Haygood, if I could. Mr. Laney, did you get an estimate for what those repairs were going to cost? I haven't yet. All right. Go ahead, Mr. Hagan. Once those repairs are made, you have no problem uh, with uh, Miss Laney uh, having access to that vehicle, do you? No, sir. I, I have texted her numerous times. Objection non responsive after no, sir. All right. Ask your next question. <clears throat> Do you know about how long it's going to be until that vehicle is repaired? Uh, I've got to wait till Friday at least. I could put it in the shop now, but I get paid on Friday. But probably it'd take four or five days, I would imagine. I don't know. Now, in addition to your bills that you've got there in Odessa, are you also paying some other community expenses? I am. What are you paying? Uh, Miss Laney put credit cards in my name without me knowing it. I'm, I'm paying them off. How and many credit cards? Pardon me? How many credit cards? Two. And uh, what's the balances on those? One of them is zero. And the other one is 1,000. Probably. And you, you can estimate, is it just over a thousand dollars? One thousand six hundred and fifty-six oh seven currently. And what were those balances when you started paying on them? That one was twenty five hundred over she went over the credit limits, twenty five hundred and fifty dollars. And uh, the other one was a couple hundred, but she has it set up on my account where they automatically draft that money out of my account. But I've been paying every extra on every payday. This is so frustrating. He's so wrong as a matter of law. He does so many stupid things, but she is she is absolutely using him. He needs I I. I I, I'd like to represent him not for legal purposes. I'd like to get him in a private conference room and say, stop contacting her. Give her all this useless crap back. The only thing that's worth fighting about in this entire situation is Otis. That's it. And never talk to her again. And that would be your Wells Fargo checking account? Yes, sir. Have there been any other expenses uh, that Miss Laney incurred during the marriage that you've been paying on? Yes. Uh, what can you tell those? Explain that to the court. That checking account is in me and my mother's name. Nobody else's. She's wrote checks on it. Uh, she had Netflix coming out of it. All kinds of stuff that I didn't know about. Uh, how much, if you had to estimate, was coming out of your account per month? Uh, I know I'm a based softie. on her spending that you didn't approve of. Objection, Your Honor. Calls for speculation. Best That's evidence. Like well. Uh, well, I'm going to overrule the best evidence. So I'm going to ask you to rephrase because he I has know. not said the last thing you said. Him professing his love was honestly the the, the worst part for me. By a wide margin, it, it was so embarrassing. Okay. 
how much how much sir could would you estimate was coming out of your account based on charges she made i would i would figure around 12 1500 a month okay. did you authorize her to make those charges no sir um what about e expenses there at the house in marathon that you're still paying what are you still paying i just put insurance on on our house a couple weeks ago <laughs> and i know they're paying the electric i believe there's no chill in this situation like none this is a zero chill scenario <laughs> coming out <laughs> can you continue to make those payments right now sir yes sir what payments can you not continue to make based on your, your current income? Objection assumes facts, not in evidence. And leading. Oh, no. So the question was, what bills can you not afford to pay based on your current income? That is correct, Your Honor. I'll allow him to answer that. Go ahead, Mr. Laney. And I, I need to sell that white pickup at 17 I need to get I need to get that out from under, get it out of the out of the picture so I can get this debt paid off so I can buy me and Otis a house. I, my With regard to the dog, tell me about how the dog was purchased, sir. The dog was purchased. No problem can see that. That was ace. But don't don't show us anything, sir. When did you purchase the dog? Four years ago. And when that was purchased, was it purchased as a gift for Miss Laney? No, sir. It was, was, it, per was it purchased it was as a family pet? It was purchased because this one died and I wanted to. Uh, sir, are you currently seeing a, a doctor for mental health treatment? I'm seeing a counselor. Has that doctor recommended that you keep Otis for therapy reasons? Objection. Calls for hearsay. Assume uh, that's sustained. Evidence. That is sustained. It is hearsay. Would you like to keep Otis for therapy reasons, sir? I would. And you're not opposed to uh, having a, an order from the court in place requiring any communication between you and Mrs. Laney to go through counsel, are you? No. So the only thing that we are disagreeing about here really is what's going to happen with Otis. Correct. Pass the witness, Judge. Mr. Clark. Brief, briefly, Judge. So, sir, Good. you're nice enough to allow her to drive the truck that she's been driving the past year, correct? Sure. Admirable, okay. During your marriage to me, uh, pull back the snark. He's paying for all of it, you jack wagon. I, I here's the, here's where Lane is bothering me. I would cram this down his throat on redirect. Bad. It would hurt. Ms. Laney, sir, you lived in San Angelo for about a year, correct? I did. Otis didn't live there with you. It lived back with Ms. Laney, correct? He was. He yes was or no, sir. Forward. The dog lived back in Marathon with my client, correct? Right? And sir, as to the condition of the white truck that you said is basically inoperable now, it operated well enough a month and a half ago for you to drive it from Marathon all the way up to Midland, Odessa area, didn't it? No, it really didn't. But yet, sir, you did drive it back up to Midland, Odessa, correct? I did. Yes, sir, I did. And so if it's not an operable condition now, that's that's something that's happened since you've had possession of it, correct? No, sir. And sir, those credit cards you're saying that you didn't know that she applied for, those are the same credit cards you buy all your knife making materials on, correct? I don't know where she, I, I put money in my Wells Fargo account and she she had PayPal. I don't know where it come from. Objection, non-responsive. That's sustained, ask it again. Sir, those credit cards you stated that she opened up, one of which has a zero balance, the one that you said has a little over a thousand dollars balance. 
those cards, you use those all the time, do you not, to buy knife making materials, correct? I don't even, I didn't even have access to the cards. I don't know what she used or what she did not use. I'm going to take that as a no to your question, Ms. Clark. There's, there's some charges on there from the treasure chest. Yeah, Judge, I don't have any other questions. <laughs> Mr. Hagan? No further questions, Judge. All right, one moment. Uh, Mr. Laney, you said you go for one week a month to Oklahoma. When's that next one week that you go to Oklahoma? Probably next week. All right, I have no further questions from Mr. Laney. Thank you, Mr. Laney. Uh, Mr. Clark, call your next witness. Nothing further, Judge. Oh, it was good. All right. Petitioner has rested. Mr. Haygood? We have no additional witnesses, Your Honor. We'll rest as well. All right. Hey. As you all know, this is a request for temporary orders. That means this order will remain in effect until the parties agree otherwise, until I order otherwise, or until this case is resolved. With respect to the 2017 Silverado, Mr. Clark, you will confer with your client and find a mechanics shop that your client is comfortable with. And I will direct Mr. Laney to have the- Oh yeah, oh yeah. I was hoping for, for them to drag in a, a, a string of pearl clutchers. <laughs> Talking about how dismayed they were with getting the, uh, getting the dildo picks. <laughs> vehicle and all key fobs. Uh, that would have been brilliant. Delivered to that location in the Midland Odessa area where the vehicle can be inspected. I'm going to direct Mr. Laney to put $2,000 into, uh, to send that to Mr. Clark. Uh, and he's going to do that twice in the next 30 days. That $4,000, Mr. Clark, is to be held by you for purposes of repairing the vehicle. It will be solely under Mrs. Laney's control as I am awarding possession of that vehicle to her at this time. Mr. Laney, you are not to make any additional changes or modifications to that vehicle as of this moment. You are simply going to take it immediately to the location that Mr. Clark notifies Mr. Haygood, Mrs. Laney has selected. Uh, after any necessary repairs, I'm not talking about maintenance, I'm talking about repairing it so that it's drivable. Uh, any any balance on the $4,000 will be paid uh, back to Mr. Laney through Mr. Haygood. With respect to Otis, I'm directing that Otis will be delivered to Mrs. Laney on August the 6th. I'm gonna ask counsel to communicate in a way that that can be done without Mr. Laney going to Mrs. Laney's residence or any other prohibited location under the temporary injunction. Mr. Haygood, go ahead. You Did said I say August, August, August October. Okay. I'm sorry, October. I clicked the back arrow instead of the forward arrow on my calendar. So that's that's fine, Your Honor. I just wanted to make sure that, that we got that cleared up. I'm glad you did. One week after Friday, the 29th of September is October the 6th, and October the 8th is that Sunday. So I'm going to give him time to get all of the dog's things together and deliver the dog to Marathon. You can ask your lawyer in just a minute, sir, uh, at a location that is agreed to uh, by counsel. All right. I'm going to direct that the parties shall only communicate through our family wizard. I think that is a good way to keep a nice, consistent log without overwhelming counsel. Uh, I don't want either one of you getting text messages all throughout the night or phone calls. So rather than having communications go between you, I'm going to order that the parties will subscribe to our family wizard. Uh, Mr. Laney's behavior has made that necessary. He will pay the cost of that subscription for the parties. And I'm ordering that the parties are and to communicate else. only through the Our Family Wizard app. Your lawyers will explain to you what that means and how it works. Start with you, Mr. Clark. Do you need any clarifications or additional orders? Judge, if I might request one additional mutual injunction that neither party shall contact any member of the other party's family absent an emergency. 
or at an unreasonable time or method, that would be greatly appreciated by my client. Mr. Haygood? I would hope that such an injunction wouldn't be necessary, that the uh, laws we have in place against uh, telephonic harassment or electronic harassment would be sufficient. But All right, what I'll do is I'll, I'll make that a, a I, I'll approve the request. I think that's reasonable under the circumstances I've heard here today. Okay. Clark, any other requested clarifications or additional orders? Uh, I don't believe so, Your Honor. I believe that has everything we need. Mr. Haygood, what about you? Yes, Your Honor. When is the first payment of $1,000 due? Of October, I believe that would be the not the current payment upcoming, but the next payment after that. So we'll say the first Friday. Yeah, that would be the next payment, October the 6th. Okay. A light payment due each month thereafter. That's correct. Every other, every other uh payday. Okay, got it, Your Honor. Assuming that it isn't, well, no, let's just say that every other payday. That's fine. Yeah, makes it easy. Time. All right, uh, Mr. Hagood, any other clarifications or additional orders? No, Your Honor. All right. One additional, that Your Honor. Oh, go ahead, Mr. Clark. Uh, when is our family wizard supposed to be set up by? Do we have a date in particular on that? It doesn't take long. I understand. All right. Uh, so perhaps by Saturday of this week? End of the day Friday on the 22nd. Yes, by sure. end of the day, I mean business day. By 5 o'clock p.m. Central Time, Friday, September 22nd. Very good. All right, I'm rendering that decision, and it is so ordered. For the two of you, what that means is those orders are in effect at this time, the same as if I had signed a written document, even though I haven't, because each of you is here and has heard my announcement. Uh, your lawyers will talk to you about how you will comply, and in the meantime, Mr. Clark will prepare uh, a temporary order in conformity with the court's ruling, he will circulate it to Mr. Haygood. Uh, they will approve as to form only, no need for the parties to approve as to content as this was not an agreement. Get that to me and I will sign it when it arrives. All right, uh, I am going to order, well, no, I'm not. I'm gonna think, I'm gonna direct counsel to discuss the possibility of mediation should it become necessary. Uh, there was testimony of the possibility of uh, family violence uh, which would accept the parties from the mandatory mediation statute. But again, that is up to you, Mr. Clark. Uh, so I'm going to uh, tell you that the court prefers before a final trial uh, on any contested matter that the parties mediate. But at this time, I'm not going to render that as an or. Understood, Your Honor. All right. Thank you very much, everyone. That concludes our hearing today. We are off the record and adjourned. You are free to exit at this time. Thank you. We have Well, there you have it. Oh, good Lord. That was truly awful. That was truly awful. I feel bad, but he brought it all on himself. He did every stupid thing he could, and he did it in text, and there was evidence of it, and he he screwed everything up. But but the, the order is, and I don't see how it can be other any other way, but the order is, and I don't, I don't know the rest of the facts of this case. I don't. But they look to be beyond child raising age so for reasons that i i can't even begin to contemplate they both work and he gives her everything including his dog and i i don't know she she has no obligations whatsoever now he he d does keep calling and texting her and doing crazy things beating up their pool Taking the dog when it was when it, when apparently he had agreed not to. So I mean, he, he brought all this stuff on himself. But I, I it's the result is incredibly one sided. But you can't argue with it. He did everything to destroy his own position. So it's ultimately frustrating. That doesn't mean it wasn't a fantastic hearing because it was a fantastic hearing. <laughs> ah. Thank you, Natalie D. I did part of it before. I, I really had fun with it a few days ago. It was last week or whatever. But but then I was told by several people 
that I'd missed I'd missed several good nuggets and boy did I. Boy did I. That was a lot of fun. All right, it's good to be back. Thank y'all for coming out. I'll see y'all soon.